offering. Brother Gary, will you come ask a blessing over the offering for us tonight? Let's go, Lord. Father in heaven, as we come before you, Lord, we thank you for your love, your mercy. And thank you, dear Lord, for our strength and uh, that you give us. And Lord, we ask you to touch the service tonight, to touch our uh, Kyle as he preaches the word of truth. And God, give him remembrance of what he studied, what you've laid upon his heart. God, give us receptive hearts, dear Lord, not only to hear the word, but be doers of the word. God, we ask you to bless those that are hurting at this uh, time, dear Lord. We pray that you just strengthen them. God, we ask you to bless this offering and use it for the upbuilding of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen.
tonight. Good evening. That's an awful week. Good evening. <clears throat> Isn't it good to be in the Lord's house tonight? Amen. Come on, you can do better than that. You got to get fired up on a Wednesday night. Isn't it good to be in the Lord's house tonight? <clears throat> Amen. Thank you for being here. And uh, <clears throat> lots of good things going on. We got Operation Christmas Child. They're packing boxes and, and uh, putting things together out in <clears throat> Family Life Center tonight with all the classes and kids, and they're fired up about that. And uh, if you haven't had a chance to do that, I know <clears throat> uh, we like to wait sometimes on projects till the end and the last minute and the last week and down to the wire. Uh, but that, that collection week is coming up. <clears throat> uh, in fact, I believe it's next week. So uh, if you haven't taken boxes home with you, grab them out in the four-year seat tray uh, or Juliana and get those boxes taken home with you. Pack them. We really want to... Uh, to give to that ministry, wonderful, wonderful ministry of sharing the gospel of Jesus at Christmas time. <clears throat> so please be a part of that. And I know there's lots to pray for. Got a special one on my heart. I want to ask you to pray, uh, Brother Randy Hooper's assistant pastor, Brother Brett Curtis. I don't know if many of y'all know him or not. <clears throat> Been a good friend of mine for a long time. <clears throat> and uh, his his little boy, Jax. I probably get his age wrong, but he's somewhere around nine, ten, something like that, I believe. <clears throat> uh, and Jax has been really sick. And uh, got an infection in his neck. Uh, but God's already intervening. But I know they would still appreciate your prayers. Please pray, pray, pray for him. <clears throat> and uh, pray for Brother Brett and Ashley. I, I know what it's like when you're sitting and you, don't, you, feel, you feel helpless and don't know what to do for your kids. And so please, please pray for them. Keep praying for Brother J.R. I know he's uh, had a struggle with his knee. <clears throat> and uh, pray for Pastor Chris tonight preaching in revival. I believe it is over in Franklin. And I uh, shall so be much in prayer for him <clears throat> in those meetings. Uh, pray for us. Uh, we'll be down in South Carolina tomorrow and Friday. And I uh, just pray that God would move in a mighty way in that, that meeting as well. Other prayer requests tonight? <clears throat> Things on your heart. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> oh, my goodness. Pray for that friend diagnosed with cancer, her husband diagnosed with cancer. <clears throat> he said down in Florida or Oregon, Portland, Oregon. Pray for that family. <clears throat> Isn't it good that God is not limited where he can reach to? <clears throat> and prayers can get to people's heart and to their physical and spiritual needs, wherever they are. Others tonight? <clears throat> Sister Charlotte's uh, Sister Jean. <clears throat> And her husband. Remember that. <clears throat> Jerry Young. <clears throat> Car accident. Remember that. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Absolutely. <clears throat> Amen. Bless the Lord. Other requests tonight? <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
Amen. Remember the Ronnie and Michael both? <clears throat> long, long road to recovery. Also, Sister Cheryl and their family uh, losing Brother Fred. And so sorry for, for his loss. No, no more heartache, no more struggle, no more sickness there. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> God is faithful. He does all things well. <clears throat> Amen. Geneva Foster's son. <clears throat> saw where he, he had the surgery today, right? And uh, we're going to, Sister Crystal's going to stand in for him here shortly. <clears throat> Having a hard time controlling his pain. and uh, So please be much in prayer for them. Other prayer requests tonight? If not, let's all gather around the altar, all of our ordained come, and our elders, and uh, let's, let's gather around and pray for Sister Geneva's son. <clears throat> Amen. Uncle, Uncle James will pray for him. Heart problems. God is able, amen. Do you know his name? Keith. Keith. <clears throat> Keith and James. Let's all pray tonight. God, we're so grateful to you, and Lord, we're honored, privileged to be in your house. God, I pray tonight.
our sins oh, and bless his name. to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to stand and sing that with us just for a minute. Just praise him for just a minute. Oh, bless your name. All because. I'll just go ahead and sing that next verse. <laughs> Wasn't that good? I feel the presence of God tonight. Have we trials and temptations? Sing it with us. Come on, praise Him just a minute. Have we trials and oh, bless his temptations? We got a place we can go. Is there trouble I'm glad we got somebody we can go to <clears throat> and a friend that'll stick closer than a brother. Reach for your Bibles tonight. Turn with us, Hebrews chapter number 12. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter number 12, if you got your Bibles. Thank you again so much for being here tonight. And uh, what an honor and a privilege it is to be in God's house. Hebrews 12, looking in verse number 12. The Bible said, Wherefore lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. <clears throat> Make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way. But let it rather be healed. <clears throat> and follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, <clears throat> and thereby many be defiled. Can we pray? Father, I thank you so much, Lord, tonight again for your sweet presence. God, I thank you for your sweet Holy Spirit, God, and your mercy and your grace just to allow us to be in your presence one more time. God, I pray, Lord, that uh, we would not take for granted not one minute, not one moment, God, that we get to spend with you. Lord God, I know tonight I'm weak and God, I'm feeble. Lord, you know our heart and our mind, but God, I pray just for a little while God, that you'd help me to decrease, and God, may you increase, and Lord, may you see fit, God, to use your servant just one more time. God, you know the needs of your people. God, you know what they need to hear. You know what I need to hear tonight. <clears throat> God, speak that which will uh, help us to grow and that will encourage us and challenge us, and God, where we may find rest in the Word of God. Lord, I thank you for your sweet presence already, that we have a friend in Jesus. 
that we can give all of our needs to. <clears throat> Lord, I love you and I praise you tonight. In Jesus' precious name, and all God's people said, <clears throat> uh, Hebrews chapter number 12, <clears throat> uh, I, I <clears throat> had been doing some, some studying through Hebrews, and <clears throat> there's uh, way more material and depth in all of this than I can ever get to. <clears throat> And I began to read and study and found some interesting things. I, I've mentioned it before, and I know you've been there as well. You have those moments where you've been through something, you've read through something, <clears throat> but it just, uh, at, at a given season and at a given time, it reaches out and kind of smacks you upside the head, and it's what you need to hear in that moment. Anybody ever have those moments? And you wonder how you could be so silly as to not see it before the other uh, hundred of times that you've read it, but... <clears throat> Uh, you'll just have to bear with me. I'm a slow learner. And uh, <coughs> so I know sometimes uh, I don't ever tell you anything new. You've already seen it and noticed it. Uh, but I just want to give you my heart just for a few minutes. Hebrews chapter number 12. The Bible said in verse number 12, Lift up the hands which hang down <coughs> and the feeble knees. I, I really want to focus on verse 13 tonight, but I, I couldn't help but get to 13 without mentioning verse number 12. Isn't it interesting sometimes how we get complacent? <clears throat> Isn't it interesting how sometimes we just get a, a, accustomed to the way things are and the way we are? And, and the Bible said here, lift up those hands which are hanging down and the feeble knees. In other words, there are times in our life when uh, we just get accustomed and we see everybody else with their head down and their hands down and their, uh, their spirits are down. Uh, and it's almost easy to get accustomed to that being normal. Or it's almost easy to <clears throat> uh, give ourselves a buyout uh, that we don't have to praise God because of what we are going through. We're justified. <clears throat> Come on, help me out right here. Anybody ever thought of all the 10,000 reasons you're justified not to pray, not to praise, not to sing, not to shout, not to read your Bible, not to uh, 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 study, to show yourself approved? Anybody ever thought of all the reasons why that everybody would understand you're too busy, you're too overwhelmed, you're going through too much, you, you've already been through so much that everybody would understand if you didn't, but Scripture doesn't teach that. Scripture said those things that are, that, that hands that have been hanging down and, and the feebleness in our lives, we ought to <clears throat> give attention to those. And then in verse number 13, he goes on further and says, Make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. In other words, instead of uh, the, the, the lame things in our life, instead of the, the, the tendency, can I, can I say this without anybody getting offended or mad at me, but every single one of our tendencies is to be lame. Y'all ain't going to amen that, but, but, but my human nature, natural tendencies, and if you're honest, your natural tendencies are not to be uh, uh, spiritual and holy and prosperous and, and do all the right things, but our natural tendencies are to be lame, and if we are not disciplined, and if we are not careful, the Bible teaches in the beginning of this particular verse, we've got to do some things, we've got to consciously make an effort that our path would remain straight and that we would uh, provide a way of healing and a way of, uh, uh, of nurture and encouragement and strength. Otherwise, uh, that which is lame will be turned out of the way. We'll, we'll make a detour in the wrong direction. But I, I want to show us some things, if you'll give me just a minute. Uh, isn't it interesting that our, our path and our ways will not just affect us, but it affects everybody around us? Does. <clears throat> it's it's interesting to me uh, to note just how much our attitudes and our mindset and our demeanor, you can, you can walk into a room and be positive, you can walk into a, a negative and a dark place and have the right attitude and, and the spirit and the favor of God in your life and you can change the atmosphere around you. How many of you believe that? How many of you ever seen that happen? But I'll tell you, you can go into a happy and a good place and have a negative and a bad attitude and you can change that environment and bring it down as well. 
What we do, it, it affects those that are around us. And could I say that in the church, the, the house of God is one of the most uh, 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 top priority places where we ought to be keenly aware that, that, that our bad mood and our justification of having a bad day or a bad week or a bad moment, we cannot allow the enemy to use that in our life because if we are not careful, We'll run people away from the house of God, not even meaning to, rather than inviting them in. Am I? Is that making any sense? <clears throat> Uh, can, can, I, can I preach to me just for a minute? Because I don't want anybody to think this is, this is not aimed in a negative way at anybody. This is just a good reminder for me that there are sometimes I just don't feel like being in church. Anybody ever been like that? <clears throat> Two of you, the rest of you, you're always happy to be here. You're bubbling over and you're just, you got it all together. I know, but, but the other two of us, there are just sometimes, I know you find it hard to believe, there are sometimes I don't feel like preaching. <laughs> there are sometimes, if I was being honest, it, it's not anything about this church or any other church. There are sometimes I just don't feel like going to any church and, and, and the bed feels a lot better and the recliner feels good and, and and cozied up in a blanket by the fire. It's not that I don't love God. It's not that I don't love preaching. It's just our human nature is natural to be lame. Somebody say amen right there. Uh, sometimes you got to work at being here. you got to work at... Uh, uh, John David, I, I, I believe he would agree with me. There's sometimes you don't feel like teaching Sunday school. Is that fair to say? I mean, I don't want to put words in anybody else's mouth, but I believe, I believe he'd second that motion. Or just sometimes you don't feel like doing it. But if we're not careful... <clears throat> We, we know what we've been through. We know what we've experienced through the week. And, and, and we, we give ourselves a pass when we come into the house of God and we sit with our arms folded and our lip rolled out and we're sulking at this one or sulking at that one. And I, I, can I go one step further and say, if you look hard enough, you can find plenty of reasons to sulk at anybody in here and be mad about anything you want to be mad about or upset about anything that doesn't even have anything to do with here. You can find something, but if we're not careful, our hindered spirits uh, and our attitudes and our mindsets, uh, it will affect people that we don't even realize it affects. <coughs> it, it, <coughs> Am I still on track? Everybody still with me? <coughs> and why does the Bible then say we ought to make straight paths for our feet, lest that which is white lame is turned out of the way? <coughs> now maybe, you know, we, <coughs> we all, <coughs> all Flocks have the tendency to be lame sheep. <clears throat> Some of it is just our very nature, or we, it's a natural thing from birth. You ever met anybody? They were just. It just seemed like it was instilled in them to be ornery. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Sister Vicky just rubbed Brother Morehart's leg over there and said that. I don't know what that pat was about, but I, I, I don't believe that was for you, brother. I, I just, I'm, just tell, I'm just trying to clear up the air right there in case you took that the wrong way. I don't think she was really talking about you. I, <coughs> yeah, I mean, you ever know anybody just, I mean, they were good people. And you, I, I've heard this said about some people. Once you get to know them, they're okay. And I'm thinking, how long does it take to get to know some people? Because they've always been ornery. <coughs> How many, of you know, how many of you know sometimes people will not stick around long enough to get to know you when you're ornery in the house of God? Somebody say amen right there. Uh, this ought to be, and, and it is, but I, I, again, I'm just preaching to me. We have to constantly be on guard because the house of God ought to be the most inviting and the most welcoming place in all of the entire country. But could I say that that's not just the pastor or the, the deacon board or the, the staff or whatever you want to call us. It, it's not just the Sunday school teachers welcoming. It's people uh, that have only been here two or three times. It's people that have been here for 70 years. It's people that founded the church. Every face. People say, I'm not talking about being fake or putting on a facade, but I'm just saying every single one of us have a role and a part to play in being inviting and welcoming and being that which prevents people from being turned away. <coughs> there are many people that are just 
naturally <clears throat> have this, this demeanor about them. And, and could I say, that's, that's not an excuse. That's just something that we got to realize we have to work on. If that's you, then you got to fix that. Say amen right there. <clears throat> we got to be... <clears throat> Some are just naturally that way. Some people have a tendency to be lame sheep because they've been taught wrong things or they've had bad experiences. How many of y'all would be, be real in the house of God on a Wednesday night? How many in here? I, I would just about bet it's everybody. How many of you ever been church hurt? <clears throat> <laughs> Some of y'all are secretly watching online right now, and I love that you are. It, it blows my mind, the number of people that tune in and listen to us, and we are thankful. We are, be, are we not grateful and thankful that they are watching online? But you want to know what the real truth is? Is that some of them, a lot of them, are hungry for the Word of God, but you're still anxious and you're still fearful, even though you would love to. They're a little bit afraid to show back up in the house of God physically because a big majority, even though they're hungry and starving to death, a lot of people have been hurt in the house of God and they're now church shy. Somebody say amen right there. <coughs> how many of you, are, I, I'm going to ask you one more time, those that are here or not, how many of you ever been church hurt? <coughs> <coughs> Can we get more personal? How many of you have ever been preacher hurt? <coughs> How many of you ever had your feathers ruffled in the house of God, not because of what he was preaching, but because he was a preacher or a deacon or a Sunday school teacher, your old feathers flared up, your flesh and your natural uh, being flared up, and inside you may not have said it, or some of you might have said it, but you may not have. You may have kept it on the inside, and what you thought is, I can't believe that no good, low down, sorry, somebody, he calls himself a preacher or a deacon, I can't believe they would do something. Something like that. Anybody ever been there? <laughs> Some of us are just naturally already on the guard. People, when they walk in the door, <clears throat> especially new, new folks, they're on guard. Because can I tell you, whether they admit it or not, there's a lot of people that, 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 that are sensitive uh, to come into the house of God. There's a lot of people that, that are skeptical and that it ought to be the most trusting place in the world. But people put up their guard because they're afraid they'll be hurt. I talked to somebody just today, <clears throat> and they said, you know, we're, we're, we're looking for a church, and <clears throat> it's like having to start dating after you've been married for 30 years, and, and, and all of a sudden, something happens to your spouse, and now you've got to start dating again. And here's what this is, it's uncomfortable. <clears throat> Has anybody ever been there? Anybody? <clears throat> And did you know, listen, people are shy and they're skeptical and they're, they're afraid a lot of times to look for anything new because they've only known one thing before and they've been hurt time after time again. There's a lot of them that are broken. <clears throat> and I said, listen, you're welcome to come to our church. We would love for you to come to our church. Would we not love for them to come to our church? We would love for as many people as can that would come to our church because, listen, we want to welcome them and love on them and, and, and show them a place where uh, we're not going to beat them over the head and make them feel lame and make them feel bad, but it's a place where we can love on them and help them. And can I say that you don't have to have been here for, for, for 10 plus years to be that welcoming committee. Listen, there are tons of people that are looking for purpose and things to do with inside the church. Can I tell you, besides prayer and prayer and prayer and prayer, the fifth thing on that top list that you can do that really does make a difference is go to somebody because they're not going to ask you how long you've been attending church, but go to somebody in the lobby with a smile on your face uh, and welcome them to your church, to our church, uh, to God's church, to the house of God with a smile. Listen, that is in and of itself probably one of the most important things you can do to be involved in the house of God. You don't have to have any credentials. Uh, you don't have to be licensed. Uh, you don't have to have uh, my blessing to be nice to somebody. Just go do it and get involved, and I promise you it'll make a difference. <laughs> Not that we don't do it, but, but, but I just want to remind you, encourage you. Can I tell you the other thing that we can do <clears throat> is in that <clears throat> 
One, one church poll said the most awkward moment in church, especially for new people, is when we fellowship and shake each other's hand. <coughs> I, I, I'll be honest, I don't know that I've ever been to a church that didn't do that time. I'm not saying it's bad, but, but one church poll said that was the most awkward time, <coughs> especially if they were new. You want to know why? Because uh, even when people actually go shake their hand, they're just kind of like, yeah. <coughs> right? I mean, you, has anybody ever been there? I know this is Wednesday night. Some of y'all looking at me like I'm crying. Have you ever been to a new church for the first time and you even felt awkward when they welcomed you? <coughs> so, <coughs> so <coughs> what you can do, listen, go to those people and love on them and, and, and hug on them. Listen, you don't have to be. What, what I would really love to see is people on this side of the church going to somebody over there on that side of the church and people on that and just getting, listen, not chaos, but just going out of your way. You know what it would mean a lot to me is if somebody walked all the way from over there all the way to over here or vice versa to shake my hand and say, I, you may have been coming here for a long time, but I've never seen you before and I just want you to know it made my day to see you in the house of God. That will turn people's lives around. Never underestimate the power of being kind. Because, listen, the facts are is you don't know what people have been through in their past that makes them skeptical to be here. <coughs> Some have been driven to a, to a feeling of where they cannot praise and they cannot worship God because of their experiences uh, with, with, with temptations and, and, and being persecuted or slandered or talked about. Some have uh, uh, been to places where uh, people have said all kinds of things about them uh, behind their back, and at times those were Christian people. <coughs> what do we do to turn that around? We <coughs> make a straight path. See, some have grown weary through their rough roads in life. Some have <coughs> had worldly trouble that has depressed them. Some have had inward conflict that has grieved them. Some of them have had so much controversy in their life that they are worried, slapped to death. But isn't it good that we can introduce them to the God of the Bible, Jesus Christ, who according to Scripture said, He has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Isn't it good that we can introduce them in the house of God uh, to the God of the Bible who is not the author of a confusion but he is an author and the finisher of our faith and he wants to write our story for the good and not for the bad somebody want to help me out right there isn't it good that in all the people's turmoil and their trial and the drama of life we can introduce them to a place where all of that stops and we just love people for who they are because we realize that none of us are perfect there's none righteous no not one but we're all fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God isn't it good that we can introduce them to the love of Jesus Christ that's an unconditional love uh, that everybody should be able to experience in their lives and I don't know about you <coughs> But I'm thankful for a church that loves people. I'm thankful for people that love people. I'm thankful that people look past my lameness a lot of times and still love me anyway. <laughs> you missed a good time to say amen right there. <laughs> one, of my, <clears throat> one of my favorite messages that Pastor Chris is preaching, he, he pre all of them are good, and he, he's preached a lot of good ones. A lot of them there are... I, I try to explain to Levi that when you say it's a favorite, it means that's the top dog, that's the one, you know what I'm saying? But Levi's got about seven different favorite teams. <clears throat> and I, <clears throat> I never understood that till just now when I was trying to explain what I'm about to explain to you, that, that it's hard to pick favorites sometimes. Come on, help me out right there. <clears throat> but one of, one of my favorite messages that he's ever preached is on, I, I know y'all are going to remember this, being messed up. You know why that's one of my favorite? Because it comes to the reality of where every single one of us either are or we have the potential to be in that spot. But it also brought to light the fact that the God of heaven loves every single one of us still and that he's not going to change his mind because if he changed his mind and stopped loving us because we were a messed up people, he'd have to rewrite the Bible. And he's not going to rewrite the Bible. Somebody ought to help me out right there. He's He's not going to change his mind that he still loves us even when we're messed up. <laughs> so, 
Some people, <coughs> some people have grown weary. Some people have become weak. <coughs> some people have backslidden on God because of evil influences. And Lord knows there's plenty of those in our world. Somebody say amen right there. <coughs> some people have backslidden because of pride in their heart and self-satisfaction or just general coldness of heart because the Bible said in the last days men's hearts uh, uh, would wax cold. They would uh, 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 grow weaker and weaker and darker and darker and lots of things that are going on there. Some people uh, ha have just became weary and weak because of a fall and because of, uh, of brokenness in their life that has hampered their progress. You ever had things been going good and then all of a sudden you run upon tragedy and and how that prevents your ability to grow and your progress and what some people tend to do is instead of trying to get back on track is they just completely give up. <coughs> what do we do? We ought to encourage those people that there is still hope. They can still get back in the game. They can still call on God. God has not forgot who they are or where they are or has not forgot about their brokenness and they too even if they've not been to church in 20 years, you can still find hope and rest and peace at the foot of the cross and at Jesus Christ by calling on him because he said come unto me all that labor and are heavy laden and I'll give you rest. <coughs> It's not too late to pick back up <coughs> where you left off. With all of these other potential things that are in the world that get us off, off track, <coughs> what do we do about those that have become lame in the way? What do we do about those that are broken and those that are weary? How do we, how do we help them through? <coughs> Thomas Brooks wrote <coughs> this statement that resonated with me. He said, it should be between a strong saint and a weak. <coughs> strong saint. And a weak saint. And he writes about the relationship between those uh, that are strong and that are weak. Now let me tell you what the enemy would like for us to do. The enemy would like for those that are strong to dwell up and swell up with pride and think about how good they are compared to how bad you are. <laughs> And the enemy takes the weak saying and deals with our mind and makes us see how, uh, at least in our mind, how good and big and on track they are and makes us feel more weak and more feeble and makes us feel as if there is no hope. But Thomas Brooks wrote that it should be between a strong saint and a weak as it is between two strings that are tuned one to the other. No sooner is one struck, but the other trembles. <laughs> No sooner should be a weak saint that is struck, but that the strong should then also tremble, remembering them that are in bonds as if we were bound with them, according to the text in Hebrews 13.3. <coughs> Wouldn't it be good if we really responded in the church like that when one is weak and those of us that are strong are you that are strong if when one that is weak is struck that we also, the, the, the strings of our heart are, are, are rumbled and rattled uh, uh, to such a degree that we weep with them that weep and we pray with them that are praying and we cry with them that cry and we rejoice with them that rejoice. That's where we ought to be, not just with people inside the house of God but that's where I've got to get to you may already be there but that's what I've got to be more aware of when I'm outside the church so that I am helping those that are outside the church get back into the way and on the straight and narrow path with Christ where they ought to be <coughs> he writes <coughs> we must the rest of the flock <coughs> You may be doing okay, but how do we seek the healing of them that have become lame and prevent them from being turned out of the way? <clears throat> Quickly, do you remember when the disciples were all gathered together with Jesus? I'm paraphrasing, but you'll remember the story. <clears throat> the Bible said they, the, the Scripture says a statement like this, but Judas was not with them. <clears throat> Now, if you know your Bible, at that particular time, Judas was actually out working on trying uh, uh, to get all the dealings and the affairs together so that he would betray Jesus. <clears throat> But nobody, the scripture notes that he was not there, but the disciples paid little attention to the fact that Judas was not there. <clears throat> 
This may not match what you've thought about theologically. It may not uh, fall in line, but can I tell you, I've had to ask the question a few times. I've thought about this on several occasions. What would it have been like? And, and I know that it was, it was written. I know it was the will of the Father. I know it had to be done. But what would it have been different? What would it have been like if somebody, Brother Kim, would have noticed that Judas had went missing earlier and went after him to bring him back into the way? What would it do, what would it change if we really started paying attention to those who used to sit beside us or in front of us or behind us or above us or below us? What would change in the house of God if we paid just subtle attention to those who had been here but now it's been a few weeks and they're no longer here? Y'all still with me, aren't you? I wonder what would change in the house of God if we started noticing and caring that they're gone. Now, can I just say this in in all of our defense? It's not that we don't care, and it's often not that we don't notice. Would you agree? But we allow the enemy to convince us that it's none of our business. Y'all ain't going to help me preach this, are you? <clears throat> I know you're good at all. You always make the follow-up calls. You always send red letters and telegrams and postcards and emails and text people. I, I know you're good at all that. But let me just tell you where I'm at. Sometimes I let the enemy convince me <clears throat> they'll just think I'm prying in their business. If I. <clears throat> but if you, who sit beside them week after week, call them or give them a text... <clears throat> They won't think the preacher's being nosy. (laughs) Uh, uh, That didn't get any amens but one. I'm going to move on. Listen. (laughs) Can you imagine if instead of allowing the enemy to convince us, just don't bother. I'll, I'll give it just a few more weeks, and then if they don't come, then I'll inquire and check on them. Listen, we ain't got to be rude and nosy about it. We just got to let people know we miss you, and it makes a difference when you're not here. It makes a difference when you are here. We want you. We need you. We love you. And if there's something wrong, I don't have to know the details, but how can I help? <laughs> and can I say to you, <clears throat> I, I'll be honest with you. I still ain't got, I I know where a lot of y'all sit and are and where, but it's sometimes hard to pick out every single person that's missing from here. And that that may seem difficult for you to understand, but let me tell you, if every single person took ownership of where they sit and who they normally sit by, I'm not talking about every time somebody's gone for 30 minutes, you call and bug them, but I'm talking about you start to notice, and it matters, and you care about your section, you care about your, your, the people that are around you, and that are not, and you begin to start reaching out to them. I wonder would it make a difference in what happened in Judas's life if the other 11 had reached out sooner. <coughs> I wonder sometimes would it have made a difference if I would have done a better job paying attention. <clears throat> you see, because sheep are liable to many diseases, we're all weak and feeble. <clears throat> and aren't you glad that the good shepherd takes pity on us? <clears throat> and his endeavor is not to hurt or show us all the ways that we went wrong, but rather to heal <laughs> and show us all the ways we can get right. <laughs> Come on, help me out right there. Aren't you glad? There's only one way, and that is Jesus, and pointing people back to the way and the truth and the life and helping them see and realize you can get back on track for Christ. <coughs> Some, we must seek people's company, not leaving them to perish by the way. <coughs> when we neglect <coughs> and leave people in despair, they no doubt will perish, but in an interesting sometimes, I'll be honest with you, there's been some times when I've sat back and wondered. <laughs> now, I know, I know y'all are not going to echo this. I know you're, you're going to be discouraged to find out that, that one of your preachers here has ever thought anything like this. <clears throat> but I've sat back sometimes, Brother Tony, and I've thought, <laughs> how could they be so foolish? 
Now, I I know you've never thought about that. I I know nobody in a church anywhere has ever said things or thought things like this. (coughs) Could have seen that one coming. (coughs) Bless God, I could have told you that. I I told you exactly what was going to happen. I knew they were on the road. (coughs) Y'all ain't amening no more. I knew, I knew that's where they was going to end up. Oh, here, here's my favorite. <laughs> bless God. You know, because that's kind of like bless your heart in the South. If you say that first, <clears throat> it'd be funny if it weren't true. <clears throat> they, here it is, here it is. I know you've never thought this. <clears throat> You'd be shocked to know how many people have, though. They brought it <laughs> as if now we are justified. <laughs> Y'all ain't going to help me preach tonight, are you? <laughs> they brought it on themselves. And if now, listen, you brought some stuff on you too. <laughs> and we sit sometimes as if now that justifies us in offering no help. No pity and no compassion. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> y'all, ain't, y'all ain't amening no more. Help, y'all got to help me right here. <laughs> I wonder what would change <clears throat> if we didn't use those statements. Because the facts are sometimes those statements are 100% true. But we do not help <clears throat> those situations get better <laughs> by making statements in our fleshly, physical eyes. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and tell him, breathe in, breathe out. It'll be okay. <laughs> not, only, not only do we have to reach out to people that don't deserve it sometimes... <clears throat> Do we have to love people that because we have to remember that there's been times in our life, whether we want to remember or not, sometimes they've been so long ago, like last week, <clears throat> that we forgot about we Yeah. <laughs> we've been in those those places where we've done stupid things and said stupid things and we didn't deserve mercy or grace or not. I, I, I saw this statement, you probably saw it too. Uh, but sometimes we gotta help people without stopping to ask whether or not they're worthy. Because <clears throat> aren't you glad? <laughs> aren't you glad? That God didn't look at us and ask what we had done that was worthy of his mercy and grace before he helped us. <coughs> Sometimes we got to welcome and invite <coughs> and show mercy to people <coughs> out there that don't look like us or act like us or talk like us or think like us. And I'm going to shock some of you that don't even have the same doctrine as us. You want to know why? Because you can't expect unsaved people or people that have never grown up in church. You cannot expect those people to know theology and doctrine like you know when you've been studying the Word of God for 30 years. They're going to make some mistakes and say stupid stuff and say things that is not always even 100% biblically correct. But you know what we do? We nurture those people and we love them anyway and eventually we help them come to the knowledge of the truth of the Word of God. <clears throat> and lastly, and I'll be done. <clears throat> I got 60 seconds. <clears throat> Not only do we invite and welcome those people, that that which is lame in the way. We don't, we don't want it to be turned out of the way. Listen, there's going to be some lameness, and sometimes that lameness is me in the way. <clears throat> but when we run into trouble is when we turn a blind eye and it moves out of the way. But the Scripture then teaches, rather, instead of allowing it just to go on its way, we take and nurture and allow that to be healed. <laughs> Am I still with you? Still with me? Am I still making sense? <clears throat> but then he said, "Make straight paths for your feet." You know why that's important? <clears throat> Not so that we can show others that we're better than them, <clears throat> but 
But it's important because people are watching us and they are watching our lives. And it, we must make straight paths for our feet that includes unquestionable holiness. We, we gotta, we gotta teach the plain gospel. But can I say, we gotta teach a simple gospel to those that are babes in Christ. And then we allow that to grow and we progress to the meat of the word. And I'm thankful that we get, we get some simple gospel and we get some meat of the gospel here that is enough that would save every sinner if they would listen but we got to take it not just here but we have to take it out there <coughs> then we <coughs> we must make straight paths by avoiding things that are crooked avoiding things that are perplexed <coughs> and by showing people that there is nothing to be skeptical of when we show them Jesus <coughs> hello whether you realize it or not, there are people that think that, <clears throat> that church and Jesus and religion in and of itself is a cult. <clears throat> it's amazing. Somebody said to me just this week, it's interesting how many people do not even know the story of Christmas and the birth of Jesus and the reality of the real meaning of Christmas. And you're saying, no, preacher, I, I, I know that's true in Russia. I, I know, I, I mean, I'm telling you, those folks in China and, and South America and in Asia, you're right, man. It's amazing. How, no, no, I'm talking about in North Carolina. <laughs> and in our schools, and in our communities, and sometimes even in our churches that don't even know the simplicity <laughs> and the love of Jesus Christ. <laughs> you know what will bring those folks confidence so that they don't have to be skeptical of the Word of God anymore? <clears throat> and it will keep them from turning out of the way is when we instill in them a confidence <laughs> of the love and the mercy of God. Paul said, I'm persuaded. <laughs> I'm persuaded. You know why he was persuaded? Because he had experienced the true love of Christ. <clears throat> Can I tell you something? As much as, much as I've tried to figure out <clears throat> different things. You ever, you ever tried to figure out stuff on your own, a new thing, a new, a different path, a different... <clears throat> you ever tried to cook and do your own twist on a recipe? <laughs> How about this? Have you ever cooked? Okay. <clears throat> Does anybody know what a recipe book is? <clears throat> Have you ever not followed those instructions and just decided you was going to take out some things and add your own thing and just deviate a little bit and not thinking it would make that much of a difference and then you blew the whole night and you ended up at Huddle House because... <clears throat> Come on now. <laughs> Mark's helping me over here, whether y'all are going to help me or not. <laughs> I blew it. I messed it up. I made a wreck. Of but just because just I wanted to throw my own, I wanted my own little twist on it. Did you know I've tried to find all these other ways? <clears throat> but there's only one thing that's really going to convince people and persuade people. Paul said, I'm persuaded that neither life nor death nor principalities nor darkness or shadows or depth or height or all those things can separate me from the love of Christ. You know why? Because he experienced the love of Christ. Can I tell you the only thing that will persuade people outside the walls of this church <clears throat> is we have to show them unconditional, unmerited love. And can I just say standing here sometimes that is difficult. <clears throat> and sometimes it is not. L listen, can we all be real with ourselves right here? Sometimes it's not easy to shut off our physical mind. <clears throat> and sometimes it's not easy to not have to feel like we got to ask a whole bunch of questions. <clears throat> sometimes it's difficult for Kyle. I don't know if it, I don't know if it is for you. <clears throat> <clears throat> well, let me ask you. The, I love First John. First John said this, <clears throat> long about verse number four or five. This then is the message. <laughs> Some of y'all been sitting here for forty-five minutes, going, "When's he going to get to that part?" <clears throat> <laughs> here it is. <laughs> this is the message. <laughs> this is it. <clears throat> will you? <clears throat> will you pray for me? Will you pray for me? Listen, you, 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 I'm going to pray for you, but will you pray for me? 
and for Pastor Chris and for the people that sit beside you and the people that sit in front of you. You say, now, now you're getting the, the list is growing. Yeah, it, it is. <laughs> and the people that you work with. <clears throat> you know what my, my, my prayer has been lately? <clears throat> God, grant us favor <clears throat> with not only you, <clears throat> but God, grant us favor with man. <clears throat> and not just those that are on the inside of the church, but God grant us favor with those that are on the outside. But in order for that prayer to be true, let me tell you what I need you to pray for me. I need you to pray that my physical eyes and, and the things that are naturally ingrained and indwell in every single one of us has got to be shut down. It's got to be silenced. It's got to be crucified. It's got to be, it's, it, it's got to be put to rest so that we can allow God's spirit and, and our spiritual highs and our spiritual love and our spiritual compassion. I, I'll just be honest with you. Compassion is not, it is not my strong point. <laughs> is that okay to say? I, I, I mean, you've got places that are not your strong it, It's just not. It's not that I don't love people. It's not that I don't care for people. It's just I'm just not touchy-feely, go hug everybody kind of thing. But there are people that are slipping out of the way every single day. And some of them are people that have been in the church and they've been hurt. Some of them that have been in the church and they've just lost their way and decided it's not for them. But there's a big majority of people that are so hungry and that are thirsty and that are looking for something that will help and that will fill a void inside of them. And my fault and my failure is I've just not done a good job reaching out to them. And saying we love you. And we care for you. And you don't have to fix everything about your life for Christ to love you. <laughs> He'll take care of that later. <laughs> Come on. Some, I need about ten people to say amen right there. <laughs> this is the message you've got to pray for me. <clears throat> and I'm going to pray for you. And we need to pray for each other. <clears throat> <clears throat> that we would keep our path straight. <clears throat> That we would, we would make straight paths for our feet. That we are walking and doing the best of our ability to be holy as he is holy. So that we, when we come in contact with people, no matter what background they're from, no matter what they've been through, no matter what their situation is, we can genuinely show them the love and the mercy and the compassion of Je Not of us, because I, I would blow it, but of Jesus Christ, that they might be persuaded that this is the real thing. It's all about him and that they... They might want to take part in the house of God and experience what God has for them. <coughs> we got to do it. <coughs> You've got to be accountable for people that are around you, people that are missing out of your Sunday school class, people that you know used to come here even if it's been five years ago, but now you know good and well they're not going anywhere. we got to reach out to them, and it can't just be me. It can't just be Chris. It can't just be one or two. It's got to take you reaching out to them because that's what will make the difference. Don't ask them where they've been. <laughs> Hello. I'm trying to land the airplane, but there was a delay, and there was somebody parked on the track. <laughs> Don't ask them where they've been. <laughs> Just remind them they still got a place to come. <laughs> Heads are bowed and eyes are closed tonight as Luke comes. <clears throat> you got something you need to pray about? Maybe... Maybe you need to search your heart. Maybe there's things God's dealing with you about. Maybe there's places and people or things that you know you need to talk to, you need to reach out to. <clears throat> Maybe you're like me in compassion and mercy and kindness and all those things are not your strong points. It's not that you're a mean, bad person. It's just that sometimes you don't capitalize on those moments. <clears throat> Maybe you need to pray and ask God to help you. Whatever's on your mind tonight. <clears throat> Let's pray for one another that God would grant us favor with people and favor in our community. Lord knows our country and our communities could use a whole lot less backbiting and a whole lot less division. And we're living in a time when we could sure use a whole lot more of us standing together and loving each other <coughs> and caring for each other. Amen. <coughs> so we stand to our feet tonight as he sings. If you need to come, Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word. <coughs> God, you know my weak points. God, you know this was for me tonight. And God, I pray... <coughs> God, that you would help me to make straight paths. God, I pray, 
Lord, that those that are turning out of the way, those that are broken, those that are weary, God, I pray that we would provide the mercy and the grace and the love. I pray that we would, through you and through your Son, God, through your Word, that we would extend healing and hope and help. God, that we would show them victory. God, we would show them that there is a better way. God, there is a better life. God, there are still people. Most importantly, God, you care about them and you love them. God, I pray even those that are watching right now online, God, if they feel broken, they feel weary, God, I pray, Lord, that you would touch their heart. You would help them to realize they're welcome here. They're welcome in the house of God. Most importantly, they're welcome in your arms. God, help me that I would keep my life under subjection so that when I preach to others, God, I myself am not a castaway. I'm not a stumbling block. I'm not a hindrance, but God, make us meet. God, help us to be humble. Help us through humility, God, to be a help to people. Lord, help me to decrease. And oh, God, may you increase. Touch your people right now. Do something big, not just in this service, but God, do something big with this group of people that's here right now tonight. Lord, I pray this would light a fire in our heart. God, I pray it would light a fire in our spirit. I pray that not one of us would leave this place tonight feeling as if we are exempt from this word. But God, may we take it and apply it. Lord, I pray we would look back a few months from now and people in our community would say what they said in the book of Acts. They that have turned the world upside down have came here too. God, I pray that the world would look and see that through you we're turning the world upside down for the better and for the good. Lord, I know nothing's impossible with you. Granted in Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you need to pray. While he sings a verse for you, Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. be the center of my life. Jesus, be the center of my life. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. And nothing else matters. Nothing in this world will do. Cause Jesus, you're the center. And everything revolves around you. Jesus, you. Jesus, be the center of this church. Jesus, be the center of your church. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, be the center of your church. Jesus, be the center of your church. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus, nothing.
nothing else matters and nothing in this world will do because Jesus you're the center and everything revolves around you Jesus you Jesus at the center of it all Jesus at the center of it all From beginning to the end It will always be It's always been you, Jesus tonight. <clears throat> hey Amen. Thank you so much for being here. Trust and pray. Hopefully you got something tonight that'll help you and it'll encourage you and uh, <clears throat> that'll be a help to somebody else. A couple of other announcements. Remember the uh, night in Bethlehem coming up, <clears throat> December the 14th, I believe it is, down in Cherokee County um, <clears throat> at the Mountain Folk Center. <laughs> there so we need folks that'll go and help and be a part of that and participate <clears throat> helping a booth and we're serving hot dogs I know for sure and also just helping with with the whole event going on it'll be a great experience and uh, so if you can go down and be a part of that we'd greatly appreciate it we'd love to have a good showing from our church to be a part of that uh, and to help support their event uh, and also <clears throat> coming up next Wednesday night uh, right here we'll be doing the financial peace live stream that'll be going on at 645 you got to be here to be able to see it uh, and even if you think you're not interested, please show up and be a part of that. I promise it'll spark some interest. It'll help you. <clears throat> uh, and if you're even a little bit interested in anything about getting out of debt, saving for retirement, how to give better, help better, <clears throat> uh, just lots of, lots of different avenues there, you're not going to want to miss this live stream. It's sort of an introduction to give you a, give you a, a little bit of information about that, and then we'll be doing the actual... <laughs> Uh, FPU class starting after the first of the year. I'm telling you, it's life changing. Uh, and by the way, giving and and being good stewards <clears throat> and managing your money, every bit of that's in the Bible, by the way. And uh, but but it's all biblically based, taught biblically, taught from the Bible, uh, along with just some good common sense and some good uh, professional advice as well that's in there. You don't want to miss it. It's great stuff. So remember that. That'll actually start a little bit early next Wednesday night. It'll be at 645. Starting at 645, we will start it on time. So uh, if you have to sneak in a little bit late, that's fine. If you can't stay for the whole thing, that's fine. But at least come and get as much as you can. Amen. Luke, you got anything? Uh, just remember Sunday is <coughs> Brother Fred Byers' services here at the church. A visitation will be at 2, and then the service will be at 3 here at the, at the church. So keep that in mind, keep that family in prayers, and we look forward to seeing everybody on Sunday. Huh? Tea time tomorrow night, 6.30, oh, yeah. is that right? 6.30? 6.30 yes. tomorrow night. Remember the Operation Christmas Child, the box is in the pack. Get those in here next week. Yes, Leave next and week there's is collection a few, week. they packed some boxes tonight, and there's a few uh, pizzas left over. So if you'd like to go over to Fellowship Hall and, and, and eat a couple slices of pizza, uh, feel free to help yourself. Amen. Fish fry Saturday. What time? Five o'clock. <laughs> five o'clock. All those that help with the, the barbecue sales here at the church, five o'clock fish fry. <clears throat> and also, also remember food distribution is tomorrow uh, here at the church. Volunteers need to be here at 1030. <laughs> How many of you have never helped with the food distribution? 
How many of you, how many of you are retired and have never helped with the food distribution? All right, there's five more volunteers for tomorrow. Thank you for being here. Be here tomorrow at 1030. Amen. Good ways to get involved. Let's get our hands up and exercise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. May God bless you. See you on Sunday.